Hello, welcome to another episode of the Week in 7 Questions. My name is Theo LaRue, Editorial and Publications Assistant at the Barnes Center, and I'm very happy to welcome our guest today, Francis Fitzgerald, Member of the European Parliament from Ireland. Francis, before we get into some of the more technical details of what I wanted to discuss with you today, I wanted to discuss your tireless work on gender equality and gender-based violence, which is an inspiration to me, as it is to many. In your view, what's the single most important step the European Union can take to further advance this agenda? It's a big question. Uh, I would say we need to take action on a lot of issues, really, uh, going forward. Digital, climate, post-COVID recovery, making sure women are involved. But my macro answer to that question is we've really got to shift the position of women in our economies we need to make sure that women are able to make their full contribution. We have a 14% pay gap at present, 29% pension gap. Think about the implications of that for women as they age. They will grow old in poverty if we don't deal with this. As we face into a digital age, extraordinarily, less women are doing STEM subjects. So we need to make sure that women are able to play their full role in our new economies of the future. <laughs> Now, before getting into some of the specifics, I wanted to ask what your view is on the general economic situation in Europe, especially given the recent rise of COVID-19 cases across the continent. It's very challenging, quite clearly. Um, what is a terrific is the support that the European Union has given to all of the member states to enable individuals to survive and businesses. We've never seen such a strong reaction at a European level in terms of providing finances to the member states through the Eurobonds and by making sure, for example, that the RRF, uh, the Recovery and Resilience Fund, uh, is going to be used in the right way in member states to build for that future, to build for climate change, for a digital economy, and to make sure that the money is spent the right way, enabling a just transition. Now, if all of that is done, I think the prospects are good. That is not to say we don't face huge competition issues from China, our supply chains, uh, innovation. These are all challenges for the European economy. The early signs are good, I have to say, but of course we now have a new resurgence of COVID and we're not quite sure the impact that that will be. But Europe has shown a remarkable resilience. Obviously, recent inflation figures have surprised everyone, including monetary policymakers. And it's one of the hottest debates nowadays. Do you take the optimistic view that inflation will soon return to normal or will supply chain disruption and the resilient pandemic keep prices on the rise? Well, I think we have to listen to the experts on this. Uh, Christine Lagarde, who was in one of our committees recently, and we discussed this with her, she said that the rise in the Eurozone inflation is temporary, and she expects that price pressures will ease next year. Uh, this is on the basis of detailed analysis done by the ECB. And as a result of discussions at the ECB governing board and their council, equally the Eurogroup president, Pascal Dunne, who has said the same. So we do need actually to take note of that. But on the other hand, uh, as well as the experts' opinion, let's keep a watching brief because we have to keep a very close eye on supply chains, how much they're going to be disrupted now with COVID. They've been quite disrupted already. We can see that, you know, building materials, for example, are in short supply, uh, lots of areas. We've also got energy uh, prices, which are, you know, two of the main factors driving inflation. So a lot depends on how, you know, these issues and, of course, the transport issues uh, in, in relation to the supply chain, how these sort out over the next year. Linked to inflation has been an explosion of real estate prices lately across the European Union and the UK as well. Do you think housing prices are in a bubble? And if so, is the bubble going to pop soon? Well, it's too early to tell whether it's a bubble or not. But what I would say is that housing and house prices are quite an issue, particularly for the younger generation right across Europe. Now, some countries have more of a culture of rental properties uh, than you know people buying directly but many many want to buy just you know many people want to have their families they want to own a home and so on 
And we, it has become very difficult for many to do that. So we need to look at our housing policies and we need to make sure we're providing more housing for those who are vulnerable, for single people, for smaller families, and try and make sure that housing is accessible to all. That's become a real issue in many of our cities right across Europe. There are currently problematic labour shortages in Ireland. Do you think the rest of the EU27 will soon be facing similar issues? Yes, I do. We have an aging population uh, right across Europe. We already have labor shortages in many areas. If I mentioned the care area, uh, truck drivers, uh, retail. In Ireland now, you see ads everywhere looking uh, to recruit people. So there is a labor shortage in Ireland. This is not easy to sort out, I have to say to you, but we really will have to work on it and see if we need to do more work visas, if we need to do more retraining, more reskilling, and we need to project ahead to see where the jobs are going to be and make sure that we retrain and reskill for the jobs that are actually going to emerge in our European economies. And innovation is very important. We've got to keep more innovation in Europe. You've been very vocal about the importance of sharing vaccine doses with vulnerable countries around the globe. The EU is already leading the way in this effort, but what more can be done? Well, I think it's really important that the EU has been leading the way. It's not always understood that we've been the biggest uh, contributors to COVAX, that we have made sure that as many people got the vaccine free as a result of our contributions and our exporting of vaccines as people have been vaccinated in the European Union. That's really important. We have a world global view on this, and I think we can do more. The public-private partnerships have worked really well. Let's hope they continue. The Christmas season is upon us. Francis, would you care to share one of your favorite Irish holiday traditions? Oh, well, I guess the big one in Ireland is family getting together. Uh, no question about that. It's all about, you know, the children and Santa and plum puddings and Christmas cake and turkey and ham. Um, it's a really big, uh, you know, piece. Going to see Christmas cribs is also part of the tradition. And Bono singing on Grafton Street, which is one of our main streets in our city. This is all part of Christmas in Dublin. That was the Week in Seven Questions with Francis Fitzgerald. Thank you all for joining and see you all next week for another surprise guest.